Timmy's. Timmy's. It's not my usual Tim's. Uh, we're in, we're in a different one today because the usual one is all surrounded by construction and I can't get to it without going way around. So it's just quicker to go to the other one. Good thing we got a backup. Holy smokes, buddy. You have a brand new massive 2500 and your, are those high beams? I have no idea. You never know with the new headlights. Everything looks like high beams with these new HID LED headlights. So bright. So we got our Tim's. I'm gonna have a granola bar for breakfast and we're rushing to the truck. We're already hooked up to that step deck. If you guys remember from yesterday, I just gotta get those risers off of there. And I'm not gonna need them today. It is still super smoky. It's actually more smoky in Steinbach today than it was yesterday. A lot more smoky. This is almost how smoky it was in Kenora. I figured that weather was coming this way. Usually our weather comes from the west, but it every once in a while it does come from the east and the north. It comes from all directions, but usually it comes from the west, right? We're facing west right now. And uh, the sun is up in the sky already. I don't know if you could tell, but that's not cloud cover, that's smoke. Well, then again, that's, that's uh, it's raining. So it's probably smoke and cloud cover together. It's crazy. All right, there's Southland Church. You can barely see it over there. It's gonna be one of those days and uh, we're picking up a load in Winnipeg. I'm guessing it's gonna be just as smoky in Winnipeg if it's this smoky here. Uh, and we're headed up two and a half hours north. I don't know if that's gonna clear things up or make it worse. I don't know where these fires are exactly. I heard that there's some fires uh, by the Saskatchewan border out uh, west that way. There's also some fires east of us near Kenora or a little ways north of Kenora. So it's, uh, who knows where this smoke is coming from. But apparently we're on fire. And that's no good. Like I was telling you yesterday, and like I've said it a million times, I don't remember this many fires when I was a kid, like 20 years ago. I just don't remember this every summer already. Every summer, at least a few weeks of our summer is ruined by a whole pile of smoke rolling in from the fires. And I don't know if it's a good thing because you know when the when there's fires that means that the forest gets to renew itself, right? Fire usually is very good for the for the for the forests. The smoke isn't good for the atmosphere, but so I don't know. Maybe we've been trying to prevent them for so long that now everything is just so built up that everything, every little spark starts a fire, you know? I have no idea. I'm not an expert on fires. Don't listen to me. I can tell you how to tie down a load and move it across the continent, okay? That's what I'm a professional in. When it comes to like environment stuff and health stuff, I'm not a professional. There she was. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, yep. Okay. Wait. Oh, oh, one more. Okay, now I'm ready for the day. Put my thinking cap on. I'm gonna grab all my stuff. I'm gonna throw it in the truck. We're already hooked up, like, like I showed you there. And we're gonna run into Winnipeg. We gotta pick up the, a load of, uh, I don't know if they're trusses, it's, it's some kind of lumber. Uh, we're gonna pick it up, we're gonna bring it all the way up to Fisher River, Manitoba. I think it's uh, First Nation, Fisher River First Nation. Uh, but we will, uh, we'll check that out in a bit. For now, let's just get the, let's just get the day going. So this is what we're working with today. This trailer is a special trailer. It's got rollers. And it's good that none of them are rolling right now because we don't want our freight to roll off. <laughs> it was all tied down. Bringing this trailer up to uh, Fisher River, like I said. And this whole thing sort of dumps up. 
and all this wood just slides right off when we get there. And there we go. So let's go get our paperwork. Start meandering our way up north and unload this stuff. This is one of those highways where there's a shoulder, but you better not touch it. It'll suck you right in. That looks pretty soft and very steep. Best just to stay on the road. But hey, at least they have shoulders. Last time I was on this road, there wasn't even a shoulder. Now they have a shoulder, it's useless. You can't even park on it because you'll just tip over and get stuck, sink right in. But there's a shoulder there now, they put gravel there. Someone put money into it for no good reason. That, that's good. Way to go, Manitoba. We're on Highway 17, Manitoba Highway 17. We're headed up north. We went to Toulon. We've been there quite a bit recently. Went west from Toulon and then north of Highway 17. This is going to take us up to Hodgson. And there we turn going to turn east and we're going to turn north again up towards Pegwas First Nation. We're going to go through Pegwas First Nation and then there's a little town there called Dallas between Pegwas and Fisher River First Nations and then we get on to Fer uh, Fisher River and then there's a building store there that needs this lumber and we're just going to unload it right off the back with the rollers. It's going to be very uh very interesting. The trailer tilts backwards, right? And then it's all the, all the rollers are locked. And then when you unlock the rollers, whoosh, all the freight just slides right off onto the ground and you gun it forward at the same time. And the way it was explained to me was it's sort of like pulling, pulling the tablecloth out off the table from underneath all the cutlery and leaving the cutlery there, you know? So you get someone to release the rollers and at the same time you gun it forward and all the freight rolls off the back and just falls nicely onto the ground. At least that's how it's supposed to work in theory. We'll see what happens. Oh, I hope nothing bad happens. It's a very, very remote area of Manitoba, which is uh, just pretty much when I say a remote area of Manitoba, I mean, I just mean Manitoba because Manitoba is remote. I live in the populated part in the south. Anywhere north like this, there's probably more moose than people. Believe it or not, I just drove through Dallas. Dallas, Manitoba. It's right between, like I said, right between Pegwas and Fisher River. So this is Fisher River coming up here. Fisher River, Cree Nation. Just 
just uh, wild open land, wilderness. That's the word I'm looking for. Beautiful country up here. It looks a lot better when it's not uh, covered in smoke. All right, we're coming up to downtown Fisher River Cree Nation. I just saw a Chinese restaurant. See? Even way out here in the middle of nowhere on the reserve, you get Chinese food. Good old Chinese. They're everywhere, man. <laughs> Where is it? Is it around the corner here yet? Are we there yet? There's the arena, the multiplex. Oh yeah, this is downtown. Yeah. This is where you get all the buildings, the community center, the ice rink. Oh, that guy's got a lot of firewood. Wow! Oh! Not allowed to burn it right now, though. <laughs> a lot of wood sitting there, though. know where you'd like this? Hell yeah. In the back over It's right in the back there? Yeah, we'll be right busy in a few minutes. Hey, Rod. Put oh. tire on. All right, no problem. Rod, go on past the keys. Oh, man! Yeah. Where's your smoke first step? <laughs> I'll go get ready for you over there and wait for you there. Okay. So what I've done is I've flipped up the rear bumper so that that doesn't dig into the ground. I've moved these axles to almost the center of the trailer. Then I'm gonna lift up the front and hold it there. And then take the straps off. Those rollers are locked. So the, the freight will stay there at an angle. And then when we're ready, one of them is gonna flip a switch on the other side of the trailer. And that's gonna unlock all of these rollers at once. And all this is gonna come rolling off to the back. And uh, I'm going to drive forward at the same time. So it's going to roll back and I'm going to drive forward and we're going to try to lay it down pretty much right here. And hopefully this goes according to plan. <laughs> First they're going to unload this stuff up here with the forklift so that that doesn't have to come rolling down too. It's just this stack that's going to come rolling down. And it should land just perfectly like that stack there. See, that stack was unloaded the same way. I know, when you first see 
the way this is done, it seems kind of sketchy, right? <laughs> not gonna lie, it feels kind of sketchy too. I feel like there must be a better way, but this is how this stuff is unloaded. This is how we do this. So, this is a, a first time for all of us. We get to see something new today. Hopefully I can lay it down right over here. Oh yeah, he's taking that stuff off the front now there, the skid steer. I'm gonna put you guys in the back of the truck as I drive forward and you can just watch this stuff just slide right on down. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about it, but this is how they do it. This is how they do it, so. The ground here was not packed very well. I really hope I don't get stuck while I'm trying to pull out from underneath that. <laughs> that wouldn't be the first one. So all we lifted up, the rollers aren't released yet. That's why it's not rolling off. We're gonna get all these straps out of the way, then release the rollers. Let us slide off and drive out at the same time. sticking a little bit. I moved the axles back to a normal position. I'm just gonna double check that as well. Yeah, they're where they should be. The pins are locked in here. I'm just on the road, just got out of the way there in the yard. And you see now these rollers still roll and they're supposed to be locked. The lock is right here. Did you hear that? Something, something's not locking, so I gotta, get up on there and kick each one of them and see which one is holding the pin in. It's a massive trailer. Okay. There we go. See that one's locked? Oh, these are the front ones. These have a different lock. That's right. Yikes. Yikes. I don't know which one of these. Maybe the pin is stuck. I was supposed to come up here and kick these all. Figure out which one. Huh, it seems like they're all working. Man, okay. So this isn't our regular trailer. Second, let me jump off of here. I don't know why this valve is sticking then. See? Oh, you hear that? Like, it. it's supposed to be this thing right here moving. Maybe we gotta tap it with the hammer a little bit. Just give it a little tap, tap, tap a roo. It's supposed to be that in there. That's what's supposed to be moving in. Why aren't they going in? None of them. Huh. I'm gonna have to turn on the, the engine fan on my brain soon. It's getting kind of warm doing all this thinking. Well, seems like maybe it's touching. Huh. Well, I'm gonna figure this out and I'll get back to you shortly. I'm gonna take a short break technical difficulties all I had to do is threaten it honestly that's all I did it wasn't locking in I walked over there I said technical difficulties I walked over there to my headache rack grabbed my bar and I looked back and I started walking back towards the trailer and said, somebody's gonna get a hurt and it locked it happened just like that I don't know why <laughs> 
Man, I should have just kept filming. That was funny. That was funny. Okay, well, uh, all of these pins are locked in. Ah, you see this? This is what they mean by I gotta spin them. See this hole here? This pin has to go into those holes on each one. See, I'm gonna turn it this way. See that? Now it's gonna come around to here. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Stop. Let's turn this thing. I don't wanna pinch my fingers either. Come on. Right? It's supposed to go in that hole. There. See, now they're locked. Hashtag new guy. We got it. I didn't break anything and I figured it out. Which is more than you can say for some drivers. I'm just saying. I'm saying. There's worse. I figured it out. Now I gotta go along here, make sure that they're all locked in like that. That's what they meant. Okay. Okay, climb back up on the trailer. Okay, now all of those. I guess these ones don't lock because this is actually a stretch trailer as well. So we're just gonna glide our way over these. And these ones here, locks, you see that? Locked, locked. Much easier to do it from up here. Oh. There's the hole, it's right there, you see it? There, is this one? Locked. Ha! Ah, I'm getting better at this, see? Almost there. Oh, ah, there we go. This one, does this one lock? Yes, it should. It has a hole. Oh no, there's no lock on this last one. Okay, but all these are now locked. You can walk on them. Look at me. Trucker Josh learning new skills every day. And to think you guys wanted me to go back to the same old, same old, doing the same thing every day. Nuh-uh. I want to do new things like this. Now I gotta try to get down here without breaking my leg or my face. There we go. I like this long catwalk. That big catwalk is very handy to have. Okay. Off we go. We mastered another art of trucking today. Scratch that one off the bucket list. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I had fun. That was fun. <laughs> 15 years of trucking. There's still always something new to learn. Well, I gotta go that way, right? I came from that way, I'm going back that way. without the GPS but I have it programmed into Google just in case so even though I just have my phone mounted there she'll yell at me when I when I have a turn coming up at least she should what's the speed limit here anybody know 